All right, uh, let's continue with the last video that we did on plotting indicators and show you how to add a few more indicators that were requested in the comment section. Starting with the support and resistance line, let's say we want to plot a resistance at uh, $40,400. You could do that using create price line method. So let's see. Awesome. So you can now see a resistance line over here, but it doesn't give any context. So let's add a title to this line. Awesome. So now you see a title which gives it more context and it looks much better. Now let's add a support at $39,800 using the similar process. Awesome. You can now see the support line as well. So this is how you plot support and resistance lines uh, using create price line method. You could also change this dotted line to a solid line by applying line style. So if you do that, you can see the line is now solid and the support line is still dotted line. So you can apply the line styling to make the line solid or dotted. Now let's see how to plot OHLC values on the top left corner of the chart. To do that, we need to subscribe to Crosshair Move event and this event returns the OHLC values when we move your mouse over the chart. And we can retrieve those values from that event and plot them on a div element or some kind of markup on the chart. So let's see how to do that. So I've subscribed to this crosshair move event and inside that event I can call the series price method and get the current OHLC values of the candlestick series and for now let's just log these values onto the console. Looks like there is some error. Okay, it's series prices. Now let's see. All right, you can see as I move my cursor, you can see the current OHLC values being logged to the console. Now let's plot them on the chart. All right, for now I just added this markup and let's add some, let's stylize uh, these values. Now that I added the markup and added the styling, let's go ahead and dynamically populate them when this event is triggered. I've created this render OHLC function where I'm destructuring the open, high, low, close values, creating the markup and then populating them inside the OHLC div. So let's see how it looks. Awesome. So you can see as I hover my cursor over the chart, the values are populated on the top left corner. And you can see that if I hover on a green candle, the values are in green. And if I do it on a red candle, it's showing as red. So the stylized options are also working well. It's not just candlestick series, you can do the same thing to plot any other indicate values too. So let's quickly plot RSI values as well using the same approach. So I've just created this RSI div element where I'm going to plot the values. And apart from the colorize option, I've also included a included Z index so that it's always shown on the top of the chart. And I also set the position to absolute in the top left corner right below the OHLC values. Now let's dynamically plot the markup values like we did with OHLC values. Awesome. So you can now see the RSI value as well along with the OHLC values. 
let's truncate the value to two decimals and also include RSI as a prefix so that it looks a little better. Done. Awesome. So you can see now the RSI values look much better. So this is how you plot OHLC or RSI or any other indicator values on the top left corner. Finally, let's add a conditional background to the chart. Let's say I want to plot the first 100 candles. I want to set the background of first 100 candles in red and the next 100 candles in green. That's what I meant by conditional background. You might need this to plot certain time zones or price zones on the chart. There is no straightforward way to do it. We have to plot a histogram series on top of the chart and then tweak some stylized settings to achieve this. So let's see how to do it. Like we did with other indicators in the last video, I'm going to first create the series and then create the data and then add the data to the series. Alright, so I added this histogram series and then I created this data. So for the first 100 candles, I set it to red and for the next 100 candles, I set it to green. And uh, you must have noticed I did not use uh, colors as red and green in text. Instead, I used RGBA because I want to make this histogram series transparent so that you know it looks behind uh, the candlestick series. So to set the transparency, I used RGBA format and then added the data and then I passed the stylus options to make it scale to the entire width of the chart. So let's see how it looks. As you can see, this is how it looks. I think it's a bit too strong. So let's reduce the opacity a little bit. Okay, now it looks subtle and much better. In order to download the code, you need to go to the URL specified in the description box and select version 2 branch. By default, the branch is master, but you need to select version 2 branch and then go to the code and download the zip file. Alright, uh, that's pretty much it for this video. I did receive another uh, comment to make this whole chart dynamic with real-time candlestick data. That is a bit harder to do, but I'll try to make a video on that as well.